Hi everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra here with my friend and attorney Terry Johnson from Firearms Legal Protection and uh, we want to talk again, second one here, about this video of a, a 12 year old kid yeah. attacking somebody with a gun. Um, again, justice served, he gets dumped on his butt, uh, there's a bunch of goodness there. But I want to talk about the legal system today and how those kids could have still been out on the street given what was going on. Now more than ever, you need trusted coverage to help you win the fight after the fight. The company I trust and recommend is Firearms Legal Protection. They offer discounts on all their plans at the link in the description. I recommend the premium plan. So uh, Terry, I just want to say as a Firearms Legal Protection member how much I appreciate the fact that I know I can make a phone call if I'm in this kind of defensive encounter and have an attorney there on my side immediately. Yeah, and, and when you make that phone call you got an attorney picking the phone up so whatever you say is, is held in confidence. Held in confidence, attorney client privilege. So I really recommend that guys. I love the premium plan. 20 bucks a month for gracious sakes. And maybe you get to talk to Terry on the phone. Hopefully never after a defensive encounter, of course, but uh, you can thank him for the kind of content that we provide for you here. So uh, we saw, saw the incident, but the bigger thing here in the news story to me, not maybe not bigger, but one of the points is, is that this, it's like a 14 year old, 12 year old, 11 year old kids who use the same car yeah. to, to carjack like two other people and rob two other people had been arrested for that, then released to the recognizance of their parents, got back in the same car yep. and mugged the dude that we saw on camera who yeah. thankfully put whooping on that kid. Then they ran off and mugged one other person before they finally got arrested. So I don't understand how these kids are out on the street after committing aggravated robberies. Well, you know, we have this system called bail. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously there, there's a couple of components to bail. Um, you want to understand the seriousness of the crime and are you a flight risk? And when you have minors, you look at it a little different. Okay, sometimes people say their, their brains haven't developed or you look at their situation at home and you try and keep those minors out of a juvenile system if at all possible because unfortunately a lot of times once minors get in the system it's just kind of the the juvenile system it's like the farm team it is it's crook you yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the farm team for the big leagues which is county jail and prison um in this situation and where did, and if you refresh my memory, do you remember what city this was in? Uh, it's in California. In California, okay. And you know the problems they're having out there in California with bail, okay? Oh boy. You, it's hard to keep grown men in jail, let alone, you know, kids. So. Well, and, and I want everybody to recognize too, you know, uh, uh, me personally, right? So active self protection has one. Uh, political position, and that is that the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, right? We're right. Uh, absolutist on the Second Amendment. John Correa, I love my whole Bill of Rights, and bail is guaranteed. Can you guess it? Which amendment? It's the Eighth Amendment, right? Uh, the Eighth Amendment guarantees bail, right? No I'm glad one, he said I'm it because I forgot it. I was I'm not the going to law school, but I do love my Bill of Rights. Uh, the Eighth Amendment present, prevents cruel and unusual punishment yes. and guarantees bail, right? So this is a constitutionally guaranteed right. Um, but it still feels wrong to me that these kids get released, uh, you know, this, their bail was like zero dollars. They sent them home to mom and dad and like said, okay, we'll appear in juvenile court later. Yeah, and, and the first question, I, I'd, I'd have several questions if I was a judge in that situation. Mom and dad, where were you when this was going on? I want to know what are they doing in school? Because I, I pretty much know the answer to that. I want to know their attendance in Probably school. Probably nothing, yeah. I want to know their grades, um, you know, and I would put them on a, on a much tighter rope. But what should happen is you start to hold the parents responsible for the actions of the minors. Was going to be my next question. So they get released to the recognizance of their parents, instantly go out and start committing more crimes. Are mom and dad going to be on the hook for something here? Well, you know, again, it depends on where you are. But I'll tell you, you know, if you take a look at some of the gun laws, that are on the books. If a minor commits a, in some states, if a minor commits a felony with a gun, guess what? The parents can be held accountable in some states. Why not here? Okay, think, think about the message that would be sent out at that point. Until that child reaches the, um, the age of majority, whatever it is in the state, whether it's 16, 17, or 18, 
a parent would be responsible for that kid and whatever they, I mean, think about it. put the burden back on the parents. You mean, I've got to raise my kid, I've got to know where they are at night, I've got to make sure they're in school. What, what's wrong with us in this country? Why would we do that? And, and I think we do, and I, and I do have great empathy for parents who are raising children with, who just don't follow. You know what I mean? I have great empathy for moms and dads, and I, and I know plenty of great parents whose kids are absolute buttholes. Yes. And so you go, gosh, man, hopefully there's enough give and take there to go, hey, mom and dad, I'm, I, I think you are doing your best and, and to try to raise a good child. And they're just utterly, you know, uncontrollable. Incorrigible. In, there's the word I was looking for, incorrigible. You know, you go back and you read uh, the Hebrew Bible, right? And if you had an incorrigible child, you bring him to the gates and they go, no, we'll throw rocks at that kid till he dies. Yeah. Um, Right, but but you know, obviously, going to be a path to that. But I think if mom and dad are not engaged with the child, if they're not doing what they should be doing, and some parents are for a host of reasons, but they're not. They're just negligently neglecting their child, or or they're in denial of who and yeah. what their child is, is is out there doing. Because part of the problem is, if the discipline and structure doesn't start at home, they'll learn it in the streets. They will. And and you take this video, you know. Um, what has this kid learned? Well, he probably learned, listen, if I'm going to rob somebody, I'm not going to get close now. Okay. Yeah. I, I had a client at one point, um, he was robbing folks, he was a young guy, and uh, he, ro he was robbing people under um, street lights. I'm like, why are you doing this? I got to see what I'm doing. I'm like, what? Yeah, he literally said, I have to see what I'm doing. But what he learned after getting convicted was, well, I come back out, um, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to rob people, but I'm not going to rob them in a manner in which I can get caught a lot easier. Because we put these kids in a situation, whether it's juvenile or county jail, where, and we, we want to keep them around other youthful, or youth I should say, let's say 18 to 21 year olds, the problem is, we're teaching them, they learn from each other how to commit crimes. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. So that's a problem. Yeah, so I mean, I think the bail system is part of what is great about America because it means you don't rot in jail, like especially during this pandemic. I mean, trial dates have been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. I mean, I can think about one that you and I are both involved. Oh yeah. In, that it's been. We still don't have a date. Yeah, it's forever, right? Yes. Holy cow. Yes. Uh, and, and, and if somebody's languishing in, in jail while they're awaiting charges and awaiting trial, that's, that's wrong. Uh, I think we see abuses like this and it makes us go, that's not right, you know? Um, but, but simply saying there's an abuse in the system doesn't mean the system needs to change. No, but you, you've got to have options. And again, you know, you, you, you look at what we do at Firearms Legal Protection, you know, you talk about bail, we provide up to a quarter million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, that again, you don't have to pay back if you're a premium member. And that's an option for some folks. Other folks have put money away in an account just in case I shoot somebody, right? I mean, that, that can be expensive, but there are alternatives out there to help people stay out of situations like this. And, and people so, really need to take advantage of them. Yeah, and so to, to preserve that for good people who defend themselves, we have to put up with the occasional abuse by dumb kids who are beyond dumb, evil. Right, evil. so uh, that evil does exist in our world, and so hopefully they can get those kids turned around. Uh, kind of doubt it if they're going to be back in Crook U, um, and that is what it is. But I wanted to be aware of the problem and see what that is, and and recognize that even though it got abused in this case, I think I'm grateful for the bail system that we have that keeps good people out of prison. Terry, appreciate the knowledge, man. Thank you.